You know, I was in Las Vegas for a week. Um, if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna lose your money, uh, go to Las Vegas and do it properly. There, that's that's my advice for all you online gamblers. You don't want to admit you do it, but you're here in this room. Eventually, online gambling in the next few years is going to be making more money than Las Vegas itself. Somebody is gambling online. Why? Go to Las Vegas. Now you've got a story to tell your friends when you get home. Honey, I was in Las Vegas. I don't remember what happened. There were free drinks at the casino, and after that, it's all a blur. I think I ended up in a poker room next to a guy named Wichita Sam. And Wichita Sam has taken all of our money. Everything. But they comped my room and gave me two tickets to see the Blue Man Group. So, back in the case, we're going back. What do you tell friends when you've been gambling online? I was sitting in my underpants at the computer, playing the online games that Ray Winston suggested I play. Turned me down eight pounds, 40p. How will I ever recover from this devastating financial setback? They're on all night long. People in evening gowns, glitter. That's not what's happening. There's one ad. Every 15 minutes, a voiceover. Do you want to play poker with professionals? No. The last people I want to play poker with are people trained to take my money from me. I want to play poker with people with head wounds and blurred vision. A five-year-old cat just walked across the keypad and accidentally logged in. That's who the fuck I want to play poker with. I don't do anything with professionals. Turns out they know what they're doing. Even ukulele players. I'm not going to compete with you. So I meet this couple, and um, they're asking me all about... Uh, Britain because they haven't been there in seven years. They're expats, and they're going, so uh, what's going on in Britain? What's, uh, I mean, uh, everything, I, I hear that Scotland and England are fighting. <laughs> what? No, they're not fighting. Well, I hear Scotland wants to be independent. Yeah, probably they do. I don't fucking know. I always, I always thought they were independent. I, I'm American. It's fucking, it's, we're in Scotland, different place, different money. Great. Scots will put stuff on their money. You can print your own money in Scotland if you have a basement. I'll just put anything on there. Hey, here's a guy who invented mouthwash. He's on the five pound note. Okay. <laughs> I love Scotland, but uh, I can't, uh, you know, you're not going to get both sides of the story. If you go to Scotland, they're going to be very vociferous about being independent. You come here and Brits are like, ah, blah, blah, blah. So, in order to, you know, sort of neutralize it, what I like to do is go to the Aberdeen Steakhouse in London and uh, just listen to the nuanced discussions, which generally sound something like this. Who do I have to fucking blow to get a waiter at this shithole? <laughs> I believe that means Scottish independence is gonna be a long, arduous process. <laughs> you call this fucking Bernays sauce? This is lemon-flavored dog vomit, you fuck! <laughs> Scotland's intro into the Euro will not be that easy. 395 for breadsticks. What the fuck? I didn't even order them. Prices may rise in Scotland if they become independent. I don't fucking know. John Lewis weighed in on the whole situation. John Lewis. We cannot guarantee that prices of our goods and services won't rise if Scotland becomes independent. Never in the rhetoric of history has a department store ever weighed in on a situation before. <laughs> Rob Roy, William Wallace, John Lewis. <laughs> there are decades when nothing happens, and there are days when decades happen. And then there's the three-day mattress sale at John Lewis. <laughs> no, nobody's fighting. Hey, Rich, I hear they're eating horse meat. What? I hear they're eating horse meat in Britain. Not voluntarily. <laughs> they found some horse meat and some ready-to-eat meals for one. <laughs> ready-to-eat meals for one. Here's a saying you only hear in Britain. Well, that went surprisingly well. <laughs> only Brits would say that. Well, we thought it was going to be shit, but it wasn't as shit as we thought it was. <laughs> it was kind of tasty horse meat. I didn't mind it. Not everyone has eaten horse meat. It's not a depression. They found it. At, look, it's some people who were buying a ready-to-eat meal for one, and because they're Brits, they had to pretend like they were upset about it <laughs> and shocked. Who would put horse meat into my ready-to-eat meal for one? <laughs> I'm shocked. As if you were walking through the supermarket. Hey, come here, fella. Do you work here? Do you work here? I would like to treat myself to a sumptuous Italian meal this evening. 
Can you help me? <laughs> of course I can, sir. This is a supermarket. We sell fresh pasta and spices and tomatoes. Right, I forgot to mention I have no domestic skills or self-respect. <laughs> oh. Well, we have a takeaway delicatessen counter here at the supermarket. They've just made a fresh lasagna bolognese. You could take that home and heat it right up. That would involve a certain amount of time and preparation, wouldn't it? What do you have that comes in a box? <laughs> it's just a big coagulated mass of unidentifiable suborganic shit. <laughs> it's been wedged into a little brown plastic bedpan. <laughs> I can just shove into a microwave and push a button and watch it twirl around. And every time it comes around, give a big old fuck you to my mother and her mother. <laughs> and anyone who ever spent countless hours in the kitchen making tasty, palatable meals. What do you have for less than a pound <laughs> that I can parade through the supermarket so everyone can see what a loser I am with my meal for one? <laughs> with a serving suggestion on the front I don't even intend to live up to, because trust me, I'm just gonna stand in the kitchen in my underpants and eat whatever comes out of this box. I don't give a shit. I don't even have cutlery. I'm eating it out of a fucking Frisbee with a shoehorn, okay? I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna shove it into an irradiated box and stare through the window like some warden on Texas death row who's just strapped his own dignity to the electric chair and fried it at 50,000 volts. <laughs> Do you have anything like that? <laughs> but I don't want any horse meat in it. <laughs> I <have> standards. <laughs> They found horse meat in the meatballs at Ikea. You can't even take your goddamn family out to a furniture store for a decent meal anymore. What's going on in this country? They need to make a movie. They need to keep making those feel-good movies. They need, they need to make a movie about a town that doesn't have a Primark. <laughs> These poor, devastated people don't even have a Primark. Because Brits love that particular brand of uh, film. Uh, it is one play or, or theater is right next door. It's called Kinky Boots. It's a bit weird. It's just, I don't know, it's a devastated uh, shoe company in Northampton and uh, some transvestite comes along and decides that he can design a shoe for men that comes up to their thighs and saves the town. <laughs> <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. I mean, I actually haven't seen it, but it sounds pretty. It's like, yeah, that's uplifting in a creepy kind of way. <laughs> Brits love that. Brits, every few years, they have to make that feel-good story. That story of, you know, last year it was called Pride. Uh, the feel-good film of 2015, Pride. <laughs> about a couple of gay activists who come to the aid of a devastated Welsh mining town. My guess is that there is a scene in that film where someone stood in the village hall, Maggie Thatcher has devastated our small Welsh mining town. Fortunately, I know a couple of gay activists. <laughs> now hear me out. And you think, wait a minute, haven't I seen this film before? Oh, maybe 20 years ago. Maggie Thatcher has devastated our small northern mining village. Fortunately, I know a small boy who likes the ballet. <laughs> years later, full Monty. Maggie Thatcher has devastated our steel industry. Fortunately, I know some men who aren't averse to taking off their clothes and rubbing their sweaty crotches into old women's faces. 